I'm Tom and this is Whiskey Shorts. Today we're, we're continuing our mini series on barrel types used in whiskey production. Most whiskey drinkers know that all Scotch whiskey has to mature in oak barrels for a minimum of three years. But this series will take a look at the cast types that are commonly used by whiskey distilleries to age their whiskies. I'll be sharing terminology associated with them and also sharing what kind of uh, notes you can expect from each cast type. So today we're going to look at ex-bourbon casks. So ex-bourbon. By law, all bourbon has to be put through charred oak casks. This could be for minutes or it could be for years. Unlike scotch, there's no minimum amount of time it needs to be matured for. Although, if it wants to be considered straight bourbon, the minimum is two years. And interestingly, if under four years of age, it has to display an age statement, so between two and four years. So where did these laws come from? Well, it's a mixture of things. First off, according to the whiskey wash, in the early days of bourbon making, the Kentucky distillers would package their whiskey in large oak casks to be shipped down the Mississippi River or to the East Coast. The white oak that is still used today was the wood best suited to making the watertight barrels that were used in shipping. The young distiller would age on its journey and be bottled at the destination. With a surplus of trees in Kentucky and the high cost of shipping, there was little impetus to return those used casks to the distillery to be used again. So those trips were generally one way. So alongside the flavour that was imparted by the virgin oak, uh, this may have led to the practice of using the barrels once sticking around. They also mentioned that the powerful Cooper's Union and powerful at the time Arkansas lumber industry managed to ensure the important word new was placed in the text of the 1935 Federal Alcohol Administration Act and now it has led to the use of the word in the current federal regulations which define exactly what bourbon is. I've put some articles and blogs used in my research down in the description. There's lots of fascinating information about bourbon to be found there. Anyway, we're here to talk about Scotch whiskey. So after the barrels have had their bourbon in them, the casks become ex-bourbon and are shipped over to other whiskey producing countries, either complete or broken down to rings and staves before being shipped over to be rebuilt by coopers for use in other whiskey making territories. So what's a fill? You may have heard refill casks as well as first and second fill casks when talking about ex-bourbon. Um, when you see a first fill on a bottle, it means that that barrel has only previously held a bourbon whiskey and the whiskey that you are holding. Second fill means it has already been used for a bourbon, a previous whiskey and whatever it is in at the moment, such as this um, Glend Glendeckham, um, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottle. This is a second fill bourbon. Um, and this system then carries on for third and beyond um, until the cask is considered dead. Um, often with uh, ex bourbon, that would be at the third fill. The effect on flavour lessens with each fill. The first getting lots of cast interaction given the vanilla, toffee, and oak flavour associated with the bourbon cask. Second fill casks will have 20 to 30 percent less influence from the cask, and this drops down to 10 percent when talking about a third fill. The cask can be used after this, but usually to store something that requires little wood interaction, and it will also likely to be shaved, toasted, and recharred to bring it back to life before being used again. So, there we have it a brief introduction to ex bourbon casks and what that means for your bottle of whiskey. Broadly speaking, if you want those vanilla toffee and toffee notes in your whiskey, a first fill ex Bergman will likely see you right. And if you want more of that distillery character, something further down the refill chain is likely to provide a good starting point. As I mentioned before, there's lots of links in the description. If you so wish, um, you can do some further reading. My next video in this mini series will be about sherry cast, so I hope you can join me for that. But for now, I've been Whiskey Shorts and uh, thank you and good night.